gathered up the strings, stepped over the fallen man, picked up the violin case that had been placed in the doorway, and closed the door as quietly as I had come. The rainy night was still damp, and it was thoroughly cold. I couldn't see anyone on the road. I took my violin case and walked quickly to the park. Many of my clients thought the violin case was a gun, while others said it contained a sharp western sword. I spread my shoulders and told them there was only a violin inside. In the dark night of this urban fairy tale, a sad serenade floated slowly by, as if it played a farewell song for everyone who seemed to lose their warmth. I'm just trying to look cool. That was my answer. The strings are my weapons. Handy and elegant. Simple, yet not rough. As for why I chose a violin over a bunch of stringed instruments, it's just a personal label I put on myself. The violin is classical, yet not pedantic. Filled with the romance of men on Baker Street in the Middle Ages. In modern society, it is also my excellent idol, Kiro's instrument. Men are idolaters, after all. Nowadays, there are various ways to make money. That's why a killer is commonplace. Where the light shines, shadows follow. It's just like the dark web, they say, surging beneath the seemingly calm surface. Soon I arrived at the appointed place, and my phone kept popping up text messages from my girlfriend. I had to lower my head to reply hastily, gnawing my teeth, cursing the red light ahead. Suddenly, across the road, a silver-haired figure dressed in a black suit shone brightly in the dark and passed before me, oblivious to my presence. Kiro? Kiro? Wait. There was something wrong. Befuddled, I stared at the silver figure and watched him fade away from my sight. My mind flashed to my collection of music CDs and interview books. How long are you going to stand there? Ling's voice burst forth from the other side. I came to my senses, unaware that the traffic lights had changed. Then I trotted over. Did you see that guy who looks like Kiro? I feel like he's been roaming around for quite some time. Could it be the real Kiro taking a walk? Impossible. I compared the two images in my mind. My idol is no stranger to me. Kiro must wear a mummy costume while hanging out on the street. A wig is simply not enough to avoid trouble. Besides, his style is way too different, I thought to myself. But what a resemblance. Perhaps he used to be Kiro's double. Ling leaped over and caught my arm. How was your performance today? That goes without saying. I smiled and shook my violin case. Except for the violin and the two bows, there was a black envelope inside. Seems you got it too. The restaurant owner threw the chicken nuggets into the boiling oil. Chief and the junior also got it. Holding my chin, I sat at the counter of the fried chicken restaurant, watching the restaurant owner skillfully handle the marinated chicken. Why would you talk to us? I paused, knowing that it was not good to toot my own horn, that my youth had long passed. Swallowing back the words of the famous killers, I continued, like you would talk to brats. I held the straw in my mouth. Rare to see the client skip the middleman, and the envelope is pitch black. Could it be supernatural or something? The restaurant owner was deaf to my joke. For a moment, there was only the sound of the frying pan. From the information we got, it must have something to do with that organization. Minutes passed before he spoke. The black swan, I muttered to myself and threw a nugget into my mouth. So those two guys are going to take it? The junior wants to. The restaurant owner drained the oil from the crispy nuggets with a net. Chief said it was a little inconvenient because he met the target once. That's why he's not in. So? You want to take it? 
I rolled my eyes. I'm more of a love me and love my dog kind of man. Hard to lay my hands on a guy who looks like my idol. Yes. The target in the envelope was the silver-haired boy I had come across the other day. Helios. I got the name from the letter. Huh? Isn't that the charming boy who just came in? Lynn came out of the kitchen with a plate and leaned over to look at the photo on my phone. Much to my surprise, I turned around only to find that the boy named Helios was just sitting in the corner. Silently, I exchanged a look with the restaurant owner, peeping at him from the corner of my eye. Head lowered, he was giving off a leave-me-alone kind of vibe. At this moment, he was slouching back in the sofa, fingers sliding across the screen at will. Even the sunlight piercing through the window stopped five centimeters away from the tip of his shoes. Anyone who knows the ropes could tell that an obvious target like him is either a fool or a hard nut to crack. I bet he's texting messages to his girlfriend. Ling whispered in my ear. Who? I didn't get it as I was scrutinizing the target. That cool guy who just came in with a fierce look on his face. But now he's staring at the phone in delight. Confused, I followed her gaze to look at the target. I didn't notice that the sunshine had spread over his shoulder. At the intersection of light and shadow, he looked at the phone with indifference. I turned my head, lips curled. Delight? <laughs> you men just have no talent for catching vibes. Then, humming a tune, she went up to Helios. Hello, here's the newest donut in our restaurant. A gift for you. She received a cold answer before putting down the plate. No thanks. This is a free gift. I never eat this kind of thing. We can pack it up for you. Ling waved her fingertip. And you can take it to your girlfriend. Hearing this, Helio slowly took his eyes off the phone. You are too loud. To be honest, based on a week of tracking him, there was nothing special about the boy named Helios. Munching on bread, I hunched in front of the computer screen and yawned for the eighth time. Yes, I finally took the mission. For no particular reason, the man behind the deal multiplied the price tenfold. Enough for me to retire and enjoy a happy and carefree life with Ling. That is, if I survive this. The rustle of headphones interrupted my thoughts. It was time for Helios to wake up. I turned up the volume and carefully resumed my life of surveillance. The city is a huge network, with traffic and neighborhood monitoring everywhere, leaving people nowhere to escape. I skillfully controlled the keyboard and opened multiple window screens. Helios's life was very fixed. He hardly ever went out of the house. There was nothing unusual picked up by the bug. It was... Mostly the clatter of water and the rustle of cloth as he dressed and undressed. Even the sound of footsteps was rarely heard. Surveillance footage from the corridors showed that he went out in the late afternoon and he often wandered aimlessly around the deserted corners of the city without any sign of contact. He would walk late into the night, come home, stand on the balcony for 15 minutes, and then take a shower. An everyday routine. The only thing that was special about him was that he looked so much like Kiro. Watching Helios in the surveillance footage walking on the street, I occasionally thought of Kiro. Even though I know they are two different people. If it were Kiro on the street, I recalled the chaotic scene when he was spotted by fans out on the street. The place was crowded with people and the boy was squeezed in the middle of the crowd. He was embarrassed, but still smiling. In an effort to placate his restless fans, he was pushed back into the car by his agent. His voice could be heard until the car was out of range. Thank you! Sorry for the trouble! It's a far cry from this Helios. The other day, I received a call from the restaurant owner while carefully arranging the strings. We lost the junior. His tone was even as if he had seen this coming. 
I was shocked. Watching Helios walking on the screen of the monitor, a chill ran through my fingers. He never disappeared from my surveillance screen. When did he dispose of the junior? Alarmed, I looked at the surveillance recordings. The footage. Is it? Is it real? Trying not to panic, I soon found the junior. There was no trace of any unnecessary trauma on his body. The technique was clean, as if he had died instantly. I removed the ultra-tiny pinhole camera from the buttons of his suit. Don't ask me how I hid it there. Competition, you know. Helios's dizzying array of moves left no room for a counterattack. Although I rewatched the footage of this attack countless times, and even tried freezing the frames, I still didn't see how he showed up behind the junior, like a phantom. The number of frames on the screen was constantly changing. I randomly clicked with the mouse, and suddenly, a few unnoticed frames flashed across the screen. I was stunned for a moment. My scalp felt numb and I could not keep my body from shaking. I slowly separated the newly discovered frame from the video. Helios was staring at the camera without suspicion. He was looking right at the camera, convinced someone was watching him. In his blue eyes, there was only mockery and derision. It was only a few frames, but it well represented the audacity of Helios. Is it because he's strong enough? I flicked my lighter a few times and it just wouldn't work. I threw it away and drew back to my chair. The Junior, you didn't die for nothing. No wonder someone put such a big bounty on this boy's head. As I thought about it, I clicked on the downloaded photo in the email. The girl in the picture was smiling bathed in the sun like a blooming flower. So, I have to start with her? In addition to a huge deposit, an anonymous email arrived in my inbox. It contained an address and attached were several photos of the girl, including a photo with Helios in the car. The address belonged to a film and television company. The girl in the photo was the head of that company. Helios never got close to it, which was a nice break. But before spending too much time surveilling the company, I received another email. This time the email was not anonymous and contained a new address. It pointed to where Helios lives. I tried to find the IP address of where the email originated, but the other side of the operation was sophisticated and cunning. After searching for a long time, I did not find anything, and the screen was inexplicably locked. You don't want anyone to approach that girl, I thought as I stared at the black screen. But it also means the more obstacles I meet, the more valuable she is. Expecting the girl to pass by after work, I glanced at my watch and began counting down. At that moment, a headlight roared past at the other end of the alley, and a figure was reflected abruptly on the wall. My mind went blank, and my body froze in place. I could only watch him coming towards me. His face was hidden by the light, and only indifferent gray-blue pupils were revealed. He had a smile on his face, snide and cold. It is often said that in times like these, your whole life will flash before your eyes. But at that moment, I only had one thought. Had I known this would happen, I'd have taken another bite of Ling's fried chicken before coming here. <laughs>